Hey guys, welcome back to screen here. Uh, today, been working on a selector pedal for a friend's uh, Marshall. Uh, I believe it's a DSL 50, I think it was. Anyway, uh, yeah, so you've got a gain and a reverb control. Uh, got, here's the circuit and the board layout here. Got it wired up for the LEDs, so when he goes when it goes off, you got your channel on and the whole LED will light up. And there's the red and there's the green there. Uh, it's kind of hard to really see the light, but when it's darker on stage, it'll show up a hell of a lot more. And he's going to run it off of a powered selector right now. It's only running off about three and a half, three. 3.7 volts off the just those little triple A's but it's gonna be run off of 9 volts so it'll be brighter and then on the inside that's why I painted it white it helps uh, flash down a little bit more out of the bottom I've done this to a couple pedals but for the finish he wants to go with uh, like a three color red white and green scheme and I'm gonna try swirl dipping it so it looks like a flag as it goes down now, I've done a couple of the swirls before. Um, this pedal that I did, I reboxed a small stone. My old small stone. There's the back cover, so you can get an idea. Comes out kind of cool looking. Uh, it's not going to be quite as crazy. It's going to try and keep it flag looking, but still wanted to get kind of the wavy that I could get out of the dip paint. So uh, I've already got it painted up with primer. I got it, uh, you know, kind of soft, smooth, sanded down with some, uh, I think this is some 2000 grit I got here. Just kind of gave it a once over and then go prep everything. Uh, and we'll come back and try and dip it and see how it goes okay so I'm back I got everything prepped I got all my shit ready I got about a gallon and a half of water you gotta have warm water and borax soap uh, so the warm water so it dissolves the borax mixes in with the rest of the water and what it does is it keep, helps keep the uh, paint from sinking so it floats up on top so I got my paints. Hopefully they're shaking up enough. I'm gonna go commando on this. So I gotta get a a claw condom here. Uh, <clears throat> I also made a little divider here because, like I said, I want to get it. I want to dip it, but I don't exactly want it swirled. I just kind of want a flag wavy to it. So to keep the red and the green from mixing as soon as I put it in and looking like a fucking Christmas petal, uh, then uh, I'm going to put the red and the green on one side. And then when I get ready, try and separate them out, dip them, and hopefully that'll keep them from washing in. You'll get a a stripe down in the center and just to be safe I'm going to check make sure I get the color orientation for the flag in the right order no, I don't want to give somebody that wants a Mexican flag a fucking Irish flag or something right okay green white and red all right <clears throat> All right. Well, let's pop these open and see how it goes. Doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo 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 -doo. See. All right. See that little camera I made in the first tryout video. Even though I I can make things with my hands, but I, I am shit on computer. So I'm trying to figure out how to get everything loaded in. Um, okay, 
So, my divider, I said green first. one of the cool things about this, this is, uh, Humbrol paints are good for this because they're they're thinner you don't have to mix them down because like some of the tester stuff some of the colors work good and some of them work kind of shitty for dipping because they're real thick and that kind of sucks but you know, hey it can't be helped Huh. I wonder, well that's kind of a pleasant unexpected surprise how it's making those little bubbly motherfuckers. Let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna dip it in that way. Alright. Uh, a little bit of red on the inside, but oh well. Oh, damn it, man. I'm gonna fuck up this thing. Okay. Alright. Uh, it's not working. It's not working. My idea is not working. Okay, failure in progress here. All right. Okay, my idea to separate the colors and make them individual has failed. And now I've got a Christmas nightmare. Yeah, look at that. <sighs> well, what shall we do? Um, hmm. Okay, so we are back here again. Take two for wing nut here. I'll see you. So we learn when we fuck up. And hopefully we learn not to fuck up again. So I'm gonna try a different method instead of trying to go a waha and dip it all at one time. Still just gonna have the divider in there. And then do one color per side and then just dip it one side at a time you see that? okay Let me make sure you guys can see everything before I just start fucking wah and stuff come on here you go swirly swirly pretty swirly there okay and now for the red there we go sure gloves are clean this time yes and there's the red. I'll give that a second to kind of do its thing. It'd be kind of cool if I could capture that freaky pattern. I want to go. So I think I'm going to stop in the the dip right about where the the top of the selector switch pedals, the selector switch cutout is. That way I get a little bit of every color in there. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let me get my stick to get it everything out of the way when it's all done. Water up out of the way. Mm. Well, let's see how the other side goes. May not be. Uh, it's kind of got its kind of cool traits, I would say. I would guess. 
Do, do, do. And you want to kind of dip them in. You don't necessarily want to dip them straight in. You know, you can go at an angle. Probably should have come out the same way. And, uh, well, let's see, kind of, eh, I don't know, we'll see how it dries, worst comes to worst. You know, we sand it down and primer it over again and see how it goes. But that's, that's really all there is to it to doing the dip painting. Um, I put that, uh, that is, oh, see a nice little flashy right there, see that's the purpose of it. Yeah, that is aluminum tape that uh, I believe I got from Home Depot. Uh, it's uh, good reflective, so, you know, I wanted to have it all white in here, but with the dunking and everything, and I don't want to risk fucking up the dunking, the paint on the outside by repainting the inside white, you know, to uh, reflect more from the LED, so this will take the place of that, that should work pretty good. And it also, it's conductive, so, uh, you know, it shouldn't have any ground issues. I mean, it's a metal box anyway, so it sh shouldn't have that problem. But uh, this also works for uh, guitar shielding, too. Uh, preferably copper for guitar shielding. You know, uh, ideally, you want to, you know, make like a little Faraday cage uh, for, you know, while your guitar on the end. But it, you're only making a partial Faraday cage because you're not completely enclosing in the, the pickups and all the electronics, you know. As much as you can, yes, but you can't cover the outside of the pickups. But anyway, Faraday cage is uh, uh, usually a copper enclosure, and then you would keep something on the inside that you want to protect from outside. So if there was an EMP uh, electromagnetic pulse, the object inside the Faraday cage would be protected. So hell goes down and you want to save your cell phone, put it in a fucking Faraday cage and, you know, after the bombs go off, you'll be the only one that will still be able to connect to Facebook and Twitter. Lucky you. Um, okay, but anyway, so, back on to the point. Um, yeah, so I sent the guy a couple pictures of it and he likes how it turned out, so we're going to run with it. Um, he had some ideas for the center and I uh, kind of took his ideas and kind of like had another idea of my own. Um, found this really cool, uh, it's um, King Pakal, uh, Pakal the Great. He was a uh, Mayan king of the city state of Penacol. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced that. Uh, Pinoc uh, oh, eh, I Anyway, look it up. Uh, and he had this really fucking kick-ass carving on his tomb, on the lid of his tomb, which is... Let me see if I can get this in there for you guys. Which is that, and I'll see if I can find another, a better picture and splice it into the video. Yeah, it's, uh, it's what looks like him taking off in a little rocket uh, which is cool. I mean, he's even got a little respirator in his nose. He's working some controls with his hands, with his feet, you know. He's, it looks like a fucking rocket to me and a lot of other people. But anyway, uh, that's the... he thought that was cool too, so we're gonna run that and it's gonna go right about like y'all and uh, I went into uh, Excel, slapped all my lettering and everything in there, and then to get the picture right, you know, I go through and print it out once, kind of cut it out, size it up, see, you know, make sure everything fits, and, you know, print out a couple times. There's the picture. He wanted a little pentagram in there, too, but that's going to be the finished logo that goes on there and uh, print it out, size it up, you know, cut it out. That's what this is and, you know, make sure it sizes out right. And, uh, you know, for those that are more uh, computer literate than me, you know, you don't have to do this little jerry rig trick to get to make sure everything lines up on your uh, water decal paper, which is what we're using. I'll go into that in a second. 
you know, I just, you know, line up where I need to go over an original print, you know, and then just, you know, this, doing this way kind of also helps because if you get extra scraps of the transfer paper, you can kind of reuse it this way too, you know, which, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I just printed it out and figured out, okay, hey, it's going to print here, so I'll put my fucking paper there. It's pretty easy. And uh, the paper is get that angled in so you can see. It's just Tester's uh, water, del or water decal transfer paper. You know, you can get it at hobby shops. Same shit you, you use on models, you know. And you get it, you throw it in your printer and uh, print out whatever design you want on it. And uh, then before we put it onto the pedal, we cut it out and uh, then we uh, put a couple clear coats of uh, uh, like a, an acrylic overspray just to protect it because it is going to go in water and this is computer ink. You know, so to get it to really stay without just kind of washing off to begin with, you need to clear coat it. And so when you put it in water, the image just doesn't fuzz and run all over the place. Uh, so that's what we're going to do next, is cut everything out. Speaking of rationalizing things, people rationalizing things, Watching strange addiction show. All these fucking, you know, it's like I always said the weirdest, strangest shit in the world that you could possibly think of. Think of the strangest, most bizarre, out there shit. And I guarantee you, somebody is doing it right now. That's just, show just confirmed my lifelong belief. People dressing up like horses, dancing around. Guys in love with inflatable to pool toys. Guy was humping his car. Literally humping his car. Yeah. He had mattress eaters, cat food eaters. Chick was huffing fucking baby powder. Um, coffee enemas. You gotta wonder, you know, what's going on? What the hell's going on? I can guarantee you these people are really out there. They exist. I know. I've, I've met a lot of them. I have met quite a few of them in my days. Being a field tech locksmith, you, you really do meet some of the fucking real gems of life. I swear. So, that guy will go right there. I have had some of the weirdest fucking people, man. You know, I had one chick one time sit there and debate with me and like a couple of the other smitties that went out there because she was a fucking basket case. So, you know, we sent, as to cover our ass, we sent multiple people just so we had, you know, eyes on, made sure everything went okay. And, uh, she was sitting there debating with us. It comes out pretty good. That two people or two things could inhabit the exact same space in time at the exact space time. So it's like, you know, two people could be sitting in the same chair at the same fucking time. You know, not in the same fucking dimension. Oh, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. His friend, I'm gonna come out pretty cool looking. Uh, you, the white on the lettering won't be there. It'll just be the black. 
so you won't see any of that. But yeah, we fucking had this chick. You know, it's amazing. People will come out and tell you. You know, you sit there and this one lady. It was on a Sunday, nine o'clock at night. Locked her keys in her car. Tell her on the phone. I'm like, all right. It's gonna be sixty bucks. Okay, okay. Get out there. Open up the fucking car. All right, sixty bucks. I ain't got no money. I mean, you have no money. Talked on the phone. Told you it was sixty bucks. Yeah, no, but I ain't got no money. Lock the car door, throw the keys back inside. You ain't got no fucking keys either. Take off. Fucking bitch. Then there's always the funny one. Huh? Went out to open up a Mercedes one time for this guy. Oh, locked keys inside, locked keys inside. And I get there, walk around the car door, passenger side, locked up. Walk over to the driver's side. Yeah, it was one of the old, older I don't know, I, I fucking hate Mercedes, so I don't know what models are what, but one of the older weird ones with the kind of square, kind of top, kind of, anyway. Yeah. Driver's side had little pull-up knobs on the side. Easy to see from the outside. Driver's side was still unlocked. Grabbed the lever, opened up the door, grabbed his keys, started checking his paperwork. Hey man, I went out there, I opened up your fucking car. That's 35 bucks. How I opened up your car is up to your own fucking incompetence. If you leave it. If you leave it, you know, locked in this manner. To where it's really not locked. You call me out, I'm charging your ass. And don't be surprised if anybody else, if locksmiths do that. Of course they're gonna fucking do that. The locksmith industry thrives off of three things. You have genuine need for security. Genuine need for security. Stupidity. Okay, and it's accidental stupidity. Sometimes it's just you can't help the fucking stupid train is running. It is full of steam and it ain't dissipating anytime, anytime soon. No way in hell. That train is fucking light speed towards the wall. No ifs, ands, or buts. And then you have paranoia. You see paranoia plenty, you know, you know, when you've got four deadbolts on a door, the person inside behind that door is paranoid. You know, chances are they're probably like on the floor, you know, right, you know, underneath the door, listening to the, you know, trying to see if anybody's fucking walking down the hallway towards them. Okay. So I've uh, back to this back to the progress here on uh, the pedal. I have got my logos done up, cut out. I am going to give them a couple coats of clear coat, which is, I mean, so exciting as to you know not get on camera. It's it's all I'm losing. A couple coats of this shit, you know, thin coats. Get them on real quick. Let them dry. Give them a couple minutes, another quick coat, let it dry. Okay, so um, I got all my coats applied. Um, you can see if I can get them right. You can see that one. You can see, you can see that they're nice and glossy, all coated. Nice. I'm gonna let these. I'm gonna let these dry for a few hours at least. Oh, to uh, you know, make sure 
I don't get any bleed when I when I put them in. Everything's dry. All the moisture's gone, so I don't get any bleed of the actual logo when I put it on. Uh, put it in the water to put it on. So we'll let these uh, dry for a few hours more, just to be safe, and then we'll come back and put them on. Okay, the decals are dry. I got everything I think I need here. I got the decals, got a little cup of water, uh, and I got what they're going on. So, um, yes, we are going to start putting them on. <sighs> Flies are fucking getting. Anyway, I start with the little one to test. Just to make sure everything else before I go dunking all the big ones in there. Make sure everything worked with the little one first. Just to be sure. <clears throat> it's going to take a second to sit in there and soak before it'll peel up. So yeah, you'll know when these guys are ready to come off. You know, you, know, you don't want to sit there and let them soak to the point that they're just floating at the top or automatically just peeling off themselves you want it to get it to where it's still to the paper but when you pick it up you kind of slide it you know back and forth like that it you know just to where it just starts to slide freely that's where you want it that's a sweet spot and that's what we're waiting for eager anticipation of the sweet spot oh, oh, so. So, not yet. Oh, wait, 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 wait. See? Uh, uh, uh. See? Oh, I screwed the fucking pooch on that one. There. Okay, now that one is ready. So, what I want to do is to help everything guide along into place. A little bit of water right about where we want it. And it's okay there. Grab that. And usually get like a toothpick. Toothpicks are handy. Kind of position that guy right about where I want it. Doesn't look too bad. Let me see. Make sure it's pretty square. And then just want to start dabbing from the center. Make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. Dabbing from the center out of the decal. Very lightly, you want to push all the water that was underneath the decal out from underneath the decal. Push all that stuff out. Get it into place. You can pat it all dry. You're good to go. And it's one down. So now that everything was a success with that, I will put the bigger ones in as well. So you know, there will not be imminent disaster waiting them. Okay. All right, time to move fast because the little ones peel in and the big ones are going to start peeling right afterwards and you want to get them in the sweet spot. So, let's start moving. Come on, Mr. Toothpick. You start laying it down. And use the toothpick at one end to kind of hold it into place and then uh, you know drape it the other side down so you know I'll give you a big example if this was the sticker you know and you got it stuck to your finger and you'd slide in everything you use the toothpick at one end you know kind of let it go and then you can come down and dab on top of it you know, get it into place. You can float it while it's floating around on the water that you put on there. That you can 
it's pretty easy to position pretty forgivable at first you know and then you, know, you get them down and they're set okay let's do some gain let's check to see if the gain is ready to go okay gain's still sticking what about you are you ready to go not yet Okay, reverb. Ah, okay, reverb is volunteering. All right. So this one will be easier for you to see. My method. Got the logo down there and just kind of slide it out underneath. Get rid of that. Float it around, eyeball it to where you want it, get it. As long as you got water down on it, it'll move pretty free. Let's see if I got that big washer down on there. Let me see. That'll work. I'll take that. I'll buy that for a dollar. Okay. Oh. Oh, wait, wait. There we go. Thought your Majesty was going to keep us waiting for a while. Um. Ooh, I may have to see if I can lift the reverb and get that up a little bit. Because I don't know. If there's going to be room for the king and everything. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Maybe. You may be able to pull this off. I think. Yeah, yeah. That'll fit. That'll work. I will let get it. I think it looks cool. some of the water. Yes. It's big enough we can do that. Try to get everything cemented into history. We're okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, that looks good. Okay. like it's done. There you go. Barely see what I'm doing. Yeah, heaven forbid you miss me screwing in four screws, right? The point of the whole show. Not the four screws. Yes. All right. And that is it. <sighs> Maybe you wipe it down and clean it up a little bit. I'll zoom in. <laughs> 